In this video, I'm going to go over some of the steps to format your text according to APA. I'm in Microsoft Word, and uh, we'll go over a couple of things to look into as you are developing your final draft, making sure that the spacing, indentation, etc. is uh, all according to APA, the 7th edition. Now, before we get started, I would double check your fonts to make sure that you're using one of the acceptable fonts. And uh, this was a change in APA 7th edition. If you take a look here, you'll see the acceptable fonts. Make sure that you not only uh, are choosing the right font type, but also the font size. Notice here that we have a few that are size 11. Calibri is font size 11 versus Times New Roman font size 12. So make sure again, you're checking and only use one of these accepted font types and font sizes. Again, each font type has its corresponding font size. Once you've decided on the font type and the font size, according to APA, make sure that you're consistent throughout the text. Sometimes when you copy and paste over from, let's say another document, Perhaps you're working on a local document on your computer because maybe you're having some issues uh, connecting to the document that we're working on online in Microsoft Teams. You might be working on a local document and then copying and pasting that text over to the document saved in Teams. Anytime you copy and paste from one document to the next, you're also copying over the formats. The formats being uh, the font type, spacing, all the format, formats that are associated with that is are getting copied over and moved over. So, you know, if you are copying and pasting, just make sure that you're going back and double checking again all of the uh, formats for that text. All right, so let's take a look at this example. And uh, the first thing I would suggest, you know, we are we were talking about including notes, and we've talked about forming an outline to provide the basis for our academic essay. At this point, as we are working towards the final draft, I would go ahead and start removing those notes, start removing those outlines, removing any comments that you have in the document. Uh, if we have a few more days left for finishing the final draft, perhaps there are just a, a couple of comments. If you're still reaching out uh, to me, if you have uh, questions about your text, you can continue using the comment feature, but make sure for the final draft that you are removing all comments. Make sure you're removing all highlights, highlighted text. And again, notes and outlines, you can uh, remove that as well. So taking a look here at this document, <clears throat> we're going to look at the formats, but we're also going to uh, make a few changes that I would go ahead and make at this point as we have just a few days left for completing the, the final draft. It's not necessary to label it, either the final draft or the first draft, so you can remove that. Make sure that the title of your essay is between six to 12 words, main words are capitalized, centered to the page in bold. Now, because we're creating a only a five paragraph essay, the only headings, the only level one headings that we're gonna be using are gonna be the title of your essay. Again, this is a level one heading. And references, this is another level one heading. Again, level one headings centered to the page in bold main words are capitalized. Notice here in references that we're capitalizing words with upper and lower case. So only the first letter of the word is in uppercase, the rest of the letters are in lowercase. Again, also each word here is capitalized, each main word is capitalized, but only the first letter is capitalized, the rest of the letters of that word are in lowercase. Now, of a text of this length, five paragraphs only, we're not gonna need any additional headings, okay? So please remove any additional headings that you have between or just before any of your paragraphs. So. We can remove those. If you have any text highlighted within the, the paragraph, you can also remove that at this time. So we're gonna remove any headings, any highlighted text. All right, now we have here 
we have our text. Now we're going to uh, notice here we need to change the font type. Now we have different options as we saw before. Uh, I think I will just select Calibri. Now make sure that when you're making changes to the font, notice that I didn't select the text and it, it didn't change. So the first thing I'm going to do, and notice here in this example, it's Times New Roman, and this is Calibri Light. So if we wanted to use Times New Roman font size 12, that's fine. You could be consistent and continue uh, changing all the text, making sure that everything else is Times New Roman font size 12. Let's say I just want to use Arial just for the sake of demonstration purposes here. I'll change this to Arial 11. Again, I'm double-checking, making sure that I'm using one of the accepted fonts according to APA. This was a change in the seventh edition before in prior editions of the publication manual, the uh, really the only font accepted was Times New Roman font size 12. But now we have a little bit of flexibility. But if we check here, Arial font size 11 is what we need. So we'll go back here, making sure that we have indeed selected Arial font size 11. Make sure that you have selected the text that you want to change. We're going to do the same here and select Arial font size 11. All right, so now we have changed the fonts. We'll talk about the references here in a minute. So now at this point, we've got to do a couple of things here. So I'm going to again select all of my text. And according to APA, we're going to select double space. Now notice what I have done here. This is how I would approach the spacing. I would go in here to the paragraph format and we've got to check several things. Number one, make sure that you have zero space before and after the paragraph. Zero space before and after. So we're going to make sure we have zero set here before, zero set after. Here we're going to select double space. The last thing we're going to check here is uh, this box where it says don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. So again, make sure you check in four places. Zero before and zero after the spacing of the paragraph. Make sure you select double, uh, double spacing and then also make sure that you have this box selected. By default, automatically Word will add extra space between the paragraphs, so we don't want that uh, to, to happen. So we've got this selected, and we're going to hit OK. Now notice here what happens. We've got our correct spacing. Notice that there is no additional space between paragraphs. This is what we want. Okay. Make sure also, let's go back and select the text once again. This is set already uh, as it needs to be. Sometimes I see text where it's lined to the right. Okay, it's got this block method. We want to justify or align the text all the way to the left. So just make sure that you also have that set. Again, make sure you select the text first and then select this option to align all of the text to the left. Now, the next thing we need to do is set the indentations. Now, before we do that, notice here I have the ruler turned on. So if for some reason your ruler does not appear, go to View, Ruler, and make sure it's set. Now, some of you, because we're in Mexico, perhaps the unit of measures is in centimeters. So we're going to need to change it to inches before we set, before we start to change the indentation. So after you've turned on the ruler, go to File, Options, Advanced, and select, scroll down here under Display, and make sure that you have set this to inches. You'll have to change it from centimeters to inches. So once you've done that, then your ruler will uh, appear as it, here, as it does here in inches. Now go back and select the text. Go up to the ruler, the top ruler. Be careful to select just the top ruler. Now notice here I can scroll this over. I'm going to move it over to a half an inch. Make sure you have set it half an inch, and notice here, if you've selected all the text, in one step, you have all of your indentations for each of your five 
paragraphs. Now, one other thing we need to change, and notice here we have extra space between the title or the heading of our essay and the first paragraph. So what we need to do here is remove that extra space. In this case, all I needed to do was backspace once, and then I have now equal spacing between the heading and the paragraph. Notice that there is equal spacing between the heading and the first paragraph. There's equal spacing between paragraphs, and that's what we want. This is what your, your, uh, your essay should look like in terms of spacing, in terms of the indentation, font type, font style, or in the size of the font. And that's, and we're done basically for the essay. Now the references, let's take a look at the references. Now we want to make sure also that we're using the same font. So we are using Arial font size 11. So we'll just select all the text. And notice when you select the text here, when you see a blank space, that's basically saying that there are multiple font types that are that have been selected. So this is also a red flag. This is something that you'll need to check because obviously we want to be consistent with the font types and the font sizes. So here in this case, we're going to select Arial because we want to be consistent with the font type that we have up here. And it looks like we have set 11. We're, we're okay there. Now, the, the next thing to do, the references always begin on a separate page. So I would select Control-Enter. Control-Enter is a keyboard shortcut that inserts a page break. So if you're looking at the ribbon here at the top, Insert, Page Break, or I'm just going to select Control-Enter. Now, a couple of things here. One is that make sure after you have created a page break that the word references appears at the very top of the page. Now it does. I can check that because if I put the cursor here right before the heading and I go up one space, then I go back to the prior page. So just make sure that, you know, it's not something like this where you've got this extra space at the top of the page. References should appear at the on the first line of that new page. The second thing is to double check the sliders, making sure that both the top and the bottom slider all appear all the way to the left. I mean, the, the, the most important is that this top slider appear at the to, all the way to the left. Notice here if, and this happens sometimes if you have an indentation set at half an inch, sometimes we can inadvertently have that same indentation when we're trying to center references. But we actually want to make sure that slider's all the way to the left because that will affect where the placement, where this uh, title is placed. We want it exactly in the middle of the page. And to do that, we need to make sure that this slider is all the way to the left. All right, now the next thing to do is a couple of things here. In this particular case, notice anytime you see this little men, this drop down arrow. Okay, this also tells you that you're not you're using a different font style. In this case, it looks like a heading. So a couple of things here. Make sure that when you select this text, the references that you're using normal a normal font. Now notice when I did this, this is a good example because actually changing the font style actually changed again our font type. So we need to change that again. Because each of these styles has its own designated font type and font size. Right? So in this case, we have normal. So we're okay. Arial, font size 11. We've selected all the text. So we're, we're okay there. And notice that that arrow, that drop down arrow has disappeared. That's what we want. This is the normal text. We're going to select the text once again. Now, we're going to do something differently here. We're going to go into paragraph formatting again under indents and spacing. We're going to do, we're going to check the spacing before and after the paragraph. We're going to again make sure that these two are set at zero. Now in line spacing, we're going to select single. We're also going to select don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. We're going to select that box. So again, zero before and after the paragraph. 
We have line spacing set at single, and we have the checkbox checked off. Now, this is spacing before and after a paragraph. I realize these aren't paragraphs, but essentially, Word recognizes anytime we create a new line or we start a new line, that starts a new paragraph. So that's why it's under the paragraph option here. Now, notice everything is single spaced as we, we uh, set, as we configured. Now what we're going to do is we're going to force a double space. We're going to manually insert a double space between each of the references. So we're going to place the cursor just before the second reference in this case and simply click enter. We're going to go down to the next reference and manually just click enter. And now we have our spacing. This is how I would space the references. Single space within each reference, double space between each reference. Single space within each reference. This is single spaced, double space between each reference. Okay, I just think it looks nicer than double spacing the entire uh, references. Makes it, I think, a little bit easier to read. Now, the last thing we need to do is add our indentations. Now, we're going to do the opposite of the indentations that we set for our paragraphs. In our paragraphs, the first line had a half an inch indentation, and then all subsequent lines were all the way to the left. We're going to do the opposite here for our references, and in this case, we're going to go back to our ruler. We're going to first move both the upper and lower slider to a half inch, and then we're going to select the very top slider, move it back to the left, so basically what we're doing is we're starting all the way at the beginning of each line of each reference. Sorry, at the beginning of the first line of each reference, we're going to start all the way to the left, and then all subsequent lines within the same reference will have a half an inch indentation. Now you might be looking at this particular example and wondering why this URL is not aligned. And that's because in this particular example, there's extra space from this point after the page, the pages of the article and the URL. There's actually spaces there. So if I click delete, notice here it goes back up. And I want to make sure I have just one space, which I do, after the period. And now we're set. We're going to do the same here on each of these. We're going to go to, to the very end. I'm going to click space and then and then a delete. And then space, delete. Now in this case, it does go, it falls down to the next line, but notice it's aligned. It has a half inch indentation. That's fine. Because this URL is a little bit longer, it's not going to fit here. So what Word does is it will bring those longer URLs. They don't wrap around, so they will, unless it's more than uh, one, if, unless it's really long, and, and then it could wrap around. But in this case, it will just move it to the, the next line, but that's okay. We still have our half-inch indentation for this particular reference. Make sure your references are alphabetized. A comes before B, B comes before C. Okay, so this would be kind of the inverse order. This reference would be at the top. All right, so that's basically it. We could go into more of the specifics, but just taking a look, uh, one of the most common types of references is going to be a journal uh, that you find in a peer-reviewed journal article, or a, a, an article that you find in a peer-reviewed journal. So these articles, all right, this is an example where we have the title of the journal, I'm sorry, title of the article, Notice that the, only the first word is capitalized, so that's, that's fine. If you have a subtitle with a colon, make sure that you capitalize the first word just after the colon as the subtitle. In this case, now we have the journal, so we're going to need to capitalize the main words of the journal. And remember that the journal and the volume number, in this case 42, will need to be in italics. We italicize both the name of the journal, and also the volume number. Now, if you have an issue number, which is optional, but if you have it, you'll have a, uh, a number in parentheses just next to the volume number, which will not be italicized. Notice there's no space between the volume number and the issue number. 
Then we'll have a, co oh, a comma here and then the pages where you can find the article. The first page all the way to the last page. All right, so in this case here, this is a, an example where you have a subtitle, so we'll need to make sure to capitalize the first word of the subtitle just after the colon. And in class, we'll go a little bit deeper into uh, the references according to APA. There's a lot of detail here, but just at a glance looking at this one, notice here we have... Uh, the main words capitalized. So here in this case, we only need the first word. For example, T and taking is capitalized, the word taking. Uh, the word B is capitalized because this is a, another sentence. And then uh, I think I would double check this just to make sure that this is exactly how it appears in the journal. Okay, I don't know if this is is part of, if this is another sentence, this is, looks a little bit awkward to me, but we'd have to double check that. But we have a subtitle here, a subheading. So A would be capitalized, and then a replication study would not be capitalized. Okay, only the first letter is capitalized. In this case, it's a little bit different because we have two exclamation marks here. So I would capitalize the first word of uh, each of the sentences only. And then we have the the journal, and then also the volume number. Again, the volume number will be in italics. It will be italicized. All right, I hope this helps. Just a very quick overview of how to quickly format the text uh, according to APA 7th edition. And I think it's easier to do this in Word if you have a uh, desktop computer or a laptop that you have uh, Microsoft Word installed on. By using the ruler, making sure you change the units. I think it's just a, a very uh, quick and easy process. Once you do this, once it's set, you really don't need to worry about the formats if you continue to add text. If you do this at the very beginning of your writing process, then you don't need to uh, keep you know, changing. You can just continue to add text. It will remember the fonts, except when you copy and paste. All right? Again, remember, if you're copying and pasting from another document, then you're likely going to also need to change the formats. All right, I hope this helps. And if you do have any questions or issues or technical issues about formatting your text, uh, let me know.